welcome back. Today we are going to talk about desk setups and so different ways you can organize your desk and really set yourself up for success when you want to be productive. My desk setup has definitely changed as we've gone into this work from home environment and the changes have proven to be necessary. I think sometimes we might buy a desk and a chair because it looks nice and it's pretty in the apartment or you get a good deal on it. But there are certain things, especially if you're sitting here for eight hours a day or more, that are worth investing in. So I'm gonna show you some of the things that have worked for me. Maybe they'll work for you. Let's get into it. All right, to start us off, we have a laptop. Nothing special here, just a MacBook. And you know, any MacBook, that's my personal preference. Some people have Windows, which is better for, for programming. They're both good. Macs are required if you wanna do iOS development. But some people prefer Windows. It's compatible with more softwares. You're able to customize things more. Mac is very like, this is the way, and you better conform to our way. I like the simplicity that Mac provides. I can easily download an IDE and it just kind of sets everything up, which is great. I'm sure that's true for Windows. I haven't used a Windows computer in so long, but if you're thinking like, oh, do I go Mac? Do I go Windows for a laptop? It honestly depends on your budget, what you're looking for. Uh, if you already have a computer, use that one. And unless it's broken or completely unusable and that it takes 10 minutes to run your code, probably your code's problem, not your computer problem. But if it feels completely unusable, I know Chromebooks are sometimes a little harder to use. I'd recommend investing in just a regular computer, nothing special, but maybe isn't an iPad. I'll tell you, I don't know anyone that uses an iPad in order to write code. <laughs> All right, second item here is a water bottle. This is nothing special. I like this water bottle. I got it from FabFitFun, and I like it because, well, it came with the subscription, but it shows uh, like two cups of water, one cup of water, how many, I believe, milliliters. Yes, you're drinking, how many ounces you're drinking. So it has like two, six, four, six, and then eight ounces is a cup. I like this, I can just easily refill it. Any water bottle will work for you. A lot of times once I'm sitting and coding, I often don't get up for long periods of time. I probably should, but usually when you're in the middle of coding something, you like don't wanna get up. Like you have, you feel like you have this puzzle in your brain and you know you changed this thing and this thing and this thing and you're not sure what thing you changed broke it. So you don't wanna get up because you might lose this big thing that's in your head. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but having some water is definitely nice. All right, this next item is purely decorative. Also came with my FabFitFun. They are not sponsoring this at all, but I think it's kind of cute, and it goes with the aesthetic of my apartment. With the, it's like a rose gold type thing. Put some pencils in here, and it's just like a little nice decorative thing. I don't like having a ton of things on my desk because sometimes it can feel cluttered. It can feel like too much stuff. So I try to keep the decorative items to a minimum. Another thing I have on my desk are these like nectar glasses and so these like are supposed to take out the blue light. I've tried these like once. I don't know. They didn't do it for me. Like I do spend a lot of time looking at the screen as a software developer. They just weren't comfortable enough for me to wear all day. It's kind of like VR. It's not something that's just easy to turn on and forget about. You have to like put on the glasses every time. Maybe I'm just lazy. Next up. We have some like pencils, erasers, but this is the big thing. I love this thing. Often I'll write my personal goals for the day on one side, work goals for the day on the other side. So personal goals might be like work out or I need to ship something, something I need to buy. That'll go in the personal column. It might be like reviewing finances for the business. It could be something for the business. Oh, I need to record a YouTube video. I put that in personal. And then work is like the corporate job. So it might be reviewing a pull request or a PR, picking up a new story, so a new feature to work on, to add to the code base, refractoring something. If I need to set up a meeting with someone, email someone back. That'll go on the other side, so I'll have the two columns. If, some, if anyone's interested in like exactly how I do this, let me know in the comments. I like that it's square, and it's a really thick paper. I'll put the link to it in the comments. I mean, the design, I don't really care about, but I liked, it's just easy, so for a to-do list every day, like I write it on this, check it off. Usually, I like using the notepad for something that's like 
I'm only gonna look at that day versus long-term notes. Long-term notes I like to put in my computer. Short-term notes I like to put just on a notepad. Maybe I'm trying to figure something out. I'm trying to figure out an algorithm. I love having a scratch of notepaper easily to just write something down and try to figure it out. Speaking of taking notes, let's hear from the sponsor. So our sponsor today is PDF Element. They give you a way to easily convert, modify, and add a signature to PDF files. Let's take a look. When I was first learning how to code, one thing that really helped me was having all of my notes in one place. One thing you can do is go to tutorials point, and this is one of many online resources that have tips, tricks for learning how to code. And here, there's all of this different stuff about Java, but it's kind of annoying to have to go to this website and use it to remember how to create a while loop. It would be great if we had this in a PDF and we could add our own notes to it, as well as easily search it without having to click all these different links. So we're gonna click PDF version, and this is gonna give us a PDF that then we can edit and modify in PDF element. Now, you do have to buy the PDF if you want to have the full version of every single thing that's on this site, but the preview gets you a lot of the basics that usually you don't wanna be Googling around. You just wanna easily search and find when you're just starting out. Some of these more complicated things are things you're expected to Google because you don't use them that often. But a lot of the basics are in this preview version. So I already have this downloaded over here on my screen and we're gonna edit it using PDF Element. Go to their website, it's linked down below, download it. It's also available, I'm using a Mac, but it's available on Windows. There's also an iOS app for PDF Element and you can use, once you create an account, you can use any version of it to edit that same PDF. Let's say I wanted to learn about enums. Here I could search enum, it's gonna find Java enums, they were introduced in Java 5, and they give you a way to specify certain values for a given variable. So in this case it's only small, medium, and large, those are the only values that a fresh juice size can have. Now let's say I found another example of this and I wanted to add to this document and say, oh, here's another way you could initialize an enum, or here's another way you could access an enum. I can add a link to wherever I found that information. I can actually add or edit the text. I could also add to this text. Let's say I wanted to say another example where an enum might be useful is for hair color. So you might have an enum with blonde, brunette, red, or black hair. You could also do it for eye color. You could put all the different examples that you can think of of Java enums right here in this PDF. So it gives you one place for all your notes. That could be one test question is give an example of an enum and where it might be useful. You can put your notes right in there with the documentation. So you're combining the documentation with your own thoughts. You could even think of like rewording what the documentation says to really fully understand it. A lot of times if you're looking at documentation online, especially from a company like Tutorials Point or W3 Schools, it's going to give you an inline editor and it's harder to figure out exactly where that would go on your in your program on a local computer. So this allows you to easily select the text you wanna get, copy it, and paste it right into your code. You can also add and edit comments. So if you did not want to, we'll get rid of the search here. If you did not wanna edit the documentation itself, instead you wanted to add a comment, we could add a comment here and point it to a specific line of text that's in our PDF. All right, so that's pretty much the full desk setup. There's like one or two more things here. I have this thing, which is kind of nice, and it goes through all of my vacation photos. I don't know if you can tell what this photo is, but it's one in Japan, which was a trip I took a few years ago. So I have my vacation photos there. I think it's kind of nice to get a virtual photo frame. Again, another decorative item. I really only have the two. Now for like the two big things, I guess, that are my desk. This standing desk, and it kind of goes up up, down. This is from Flexi Spot. All the links for everything are gonna be in the bio. Extension cord. <laughs> there is an extension cord. But um, it's a clean white desk. Fits everything it needs to fit. 
I did get this desk for free as a part of a sponsorship. Wasn't too hard to build, took like 30 minutes. I did have a messed up part, and because I was sponsoring it, they were super quick to get back to me, so customer service seems okay, but it's hard to tell because it was a sponsorship. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the desk. It's an Amazon purchase. You can purchase it on Amazon. Pretty easy, comes in the mail, and you just assemble it. And they give you the tools and everything. Something I did buy was this chair, and this chair is actually super comfortable. I was visiting one of my friends, and I sat down in their chair, and it was the comfiest chair I've ever sat in, and so I was like, I need to buy this chair, and then I did. And so this is from Autonomous AI, and then I realized every, like, all the tech people have this chair. If you go look at the tech Instagrams, they all have this chair, and it's a great chair. It has a little neck rest. It has a bunch of configurations. This is the full chair. It's beautiful. It's ergonomic, so it has this little back rest thing, and you can adjust this up and down. You can adjust these forward, back, up and down. There's a ton of different things. You can move the seat forward, like this seat forward and back. Would highly recommend the chair. Out of all the things in my desk setup, the chair is my favorite. The one pro I will say about the standing desk, forgot to say earlier, is that I, well, I don't really use it to stand. Like, I know a lot of people are like, ooh, standing desk, it's gonna be so great, and I'm gonna stand, and I'm gonna be fit. And like, standing all day is not gonna make you fit or healthier. Like it might be nice, but it's like a combination of sitting and standing that works the best. Usually I'll stand up to make lunch, I'll stand up to refill my water bottle, so I don't feel the need to stand all day. But what I really like about the lever is that, like I'm, I wouldn't say I'm super tall, but I'm definitely taller than some. And for some desks, my knees can feel like crowded underneath the desk and so being able to have a lever where you can easily go up or down and make it so that your legs have enough space is awesome. You could also, I also don't have monitors setups. I don't know, a monitor, it's nice but it just takes up too much space and I like having an open space when I'm working. Get a monitor if you like, but most of the coding things I'm working on like don't require extra monitors. Usually I find extra monitors are good when you're trying to debug something that interacts with multiple systems. And so if you've got logs over here, documentation over here, your cloud provider over here, the triage channel over here, plus you're in this video chat thing. Like if you need all of these different things up and open and you need to do a bunch of stuff at once in order to debug or get to the bottom of this triaged issue, then multiple monitors make sense. If it's kind of a run of the mill, like you're adding a feature and you need to go look up the documentation, like you'll go read the documentation and then you'll go back to your code. I don't find I need personally a ton of monitors in order to do that, but I'm not working on things right now where I would need that so I don't have them in my workspace. Now most of the day is spent here in the core workspace, but I also have a few other areas in my apartment where I write code, including this couch. Like sometimes I just want to write code and be comfy and so I'll go there and then when the code doesn't work I'll cry there. Just kidding. Sometimes you need to be surrounded by comfy things when your code isn't working. But most of the time I'm here. One more thing about this desk setup is that it's kind of close to a window and I've put my desk here mainly for YouTube and for TikTok and for these platforms where I create content because this is where I get the best lighting. But when you're looking at a computer screen sometimes this light can be overwhelming and it's hard to focus when you have bright light coming in and your desktop screen is not as bright as the bright light coming from the natural sun. So that's why we have this stereotype of like programmers in a dark cave because your eyes can't naturally focus if you have bright light outside very close to the same level of sight as your computer screen. To fix that is like don't put your desk right next to a window even though it seems nice like oh I can look out the window and think about how my code's gonna work. Um, it's not gonna work like that. It's gonna be so bright and I think it's funny because a lot of times a senior position will get a desk next to a window and I'm like I don't want that ever. <laughs> Something you can do to counteract this is to get blinds which I do have and usually I'll put those down during the day. If I'm coding early for some reason then like it'll be nice I can look at the sunrise but usually I'm not. Let's look at one more area. Another area I'll code is in my kitchen. Usually 
Um, usually I do code reviews here, mostly, and I'll sip my coffee in the morning and I will write and review people's code. I'll write a few comments, run the code, connect to the VPN, usually start the day with that. I'll usually only sit here for like 45 minutes, an hour maybe, um, just to like enjoy coffee. And I'm terrified of spilling the coffee on my desk or all over my computer. Like here, I have a lot of counter space. And so I feel like I could actually move my computer out of the way if I spill my coffee, which I couldn't do over there. Now this main living space is where I do most of the work, but sometimes the room tone of this space is a little echoey um, and it isn't perfect. And my closet actually has a lot better room tone. So sometimes when I make courses for external third parties, I work in my closet. This is my closet and I basically, I found this desk on Amazon and it's really cool. This is the top of the desk. You can kind of see in the corner there. And then this is the bottom of the desk. And you can easily just put it together on the fly. So here we have the desk and the room tone maybe you notice is a little bit different, but um, basically of this bottom, it hooks into the top. There are like four different things here and it's pretty sturdy and works perfectly for when I just need to set something up, record some audio, and then I would bring the autonomous AI chair in here to record. And so I would carry that over here, do the recording I needed to do and easily pop it up. It takes less than 90 seconds to set up every time. And it's better than having the desk up here all the time. The FlexiSpot desk, one con of it is that it's super heavy and it's really hard to move. So once you build that standing desk, you really aren't moving it around. I don't have a specific room where I record all my content. And so this is the next best thing. All right, that's it for this video. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like, do all of the YouTube things Things, and I hope you found a new tip, trick, or product maybe you want to try. Happy coding!